Last time we were working in section 2.5, working on implicit differentiation, and we had one question remaining when we left. So we're going to take a look at that one and finish off this section. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is that notation. Um, I heard you guys murmuring about that notation already today. This notation means second derivative. So what do you think, we'll talk about the actual symbols here in a sec, but what do you think it would mean to do a second derivative of something? The derivative of the derivative, exactly. So we're going to have to find the derivative, and then we're going to have to do the whole process of finding the derivative a second time. That's the, that's the general idea of what we're doing, okay? Now, the actual way that this is read, just so that you can see how to read it, sometimes you'll see the notation done like this, right? Y double prime. Um, the notation that's on this particular slide says we want the second derivative of Y. That's how you read the numerator part of that sort of fraction. And the bottom says with respect to x twice. So normally, when you see dy dx, it really is read the derivative of y with respect to x. So this notation is read the, deriv the second derivative of y with respect to x twice. And you notice that this, the squareds are on different places, aren't they? It's kind of an awkward notation, but it, it still works. And so what we're going to do first, though, looking at this problem, is we're going to take the first derivative, just like we did last time, implicit differentiation. So what is the derivative of x squared? 2x. What's the derivative of y squared? 2y dy dx. And then the derivative of 36? 0. Okay, so we want to solve this for dy dx. Okay, it is going to be extremely helpful for us to solve that before we start taking a second derivative of something. Okay. So um, we're going to move the 2x to the other side. So I have negative 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. And then I will divide by negative 2y. So what is dy dx here? Yeah, dy dx is x over y. So far so good? All right, so this is one of those two-step problems. You have to do the first part, even though it doesn't actually say to do the first part in order to move on to do the second. All right, after that, then, we want the second derivative of this. So we'll get the notation right. The derivative of dy dx is that second derivative notation. The second derivative of y with respect to x twice. On the right side, we need the derivative of y, x over y. How are we going to do that? Quotient rule. Somebody said quotient rule. You got it. This is a quotient rule. So what is the quotient rule? You guys are about to take a quiz for me today. All kinds of rules are going to be on there. What's the quotient rule say? Okay, so the bottom, right, which is y, times the derivative of x. So what's the derivative of x? 1. And then what sign comes next? Minus. Subtraction, yeah. And then I need to reverse it, right? So now I need x the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator. What's the derivative of the denominator? dy dx. Have no fear, we will take care of him in a moment. And all of this is over y squared. Excellent. So this is all the calculus there is. Now it's algebra. Okay. So next time you think that you don't like calculus, it's probably not true. You probably don't like algebra, because the algebra is where things get messy. I don't want my problem to be in terms of x, y, and dy dx. Because the direction said I wanted it in terms of x and y, right? So I've got to substitute in dy dx or what dy dx is, but what is dy dx? It's x over y. So this is y minus x times x over y all over y squared. Did everybody catch that? Yeah, and we get to simplify this up um, as well. So we have y minus x squared over y all over y squared. Now what? Multiply by something. What would you like to multiply by? There's a couple different options. Y? I like multiplying by y because if I multiply by y, I eliminate the y right here. That's kind of my favorite. There's another way to do it. I'll mention it in a minute. Let's do this one since that one was the one I heard y'all say. Um, you want to make sure that you apply this to each piece. 
So this becomes y squared minus, and then the x squared multiplied by, over y multiplied by y just becomes minus x squared. And then this is over y cubed. Um, the other option that you could have done right here, I'll erase this, I'll, I'll put it back in here. Instead of multiplying this way, we could have taken this and said, okay, no, I'm just going to change this. I'm just going to multiply by 1 over y squared up here and done it from that perspective, right? Div dividing by y squared is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over y squared, so you could have done that. Okay, there's one more cool thing that can happen here. It's okay, we can leave this like this, but we can actually simplify this one more step further. That numerator, y squared minus x squared, do you see that anywhere on this screen? Or something awfully close to it? The original problem, now it doesn't say y squared minus x squared, it says x squared minus y squared. But if x squared minus y squared is 36, what's y squared minus x squared? It's negative 36. So this is actually the same as negative 36 over y cubed, which is considerably cleaner, especially if you had to take something called a third derivative. Not going to do it today. But if you did, wouldn't it be better to have that constant up there instead of some, co some uh, variables up there? It would definitely be easier. All right, that's the last one.